Hey everybody, it's Justin, your guide to the other side. I know we've ref I know we've covered a lot of things related to other side, especially uh, like the other side wiki, the gaming blog, Legends of the Mara, um, and a bunch of things related to how to play the game. And I really want to, you know, come back to where everything started, you know, other side wiki. Um, <laughs> sorry, no, not other side wiki, uh, other side X Y Z. So this is where it all began. This is where everything is. Um, and I think we can glean a glean a couple of uh, really fun insights if we take a look at the if we take a look at the website again. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. Um, you know, there's a trailer here. Uh, you can go take a look at that. Uh, you know, we we enter the other side. I love this game mainly because it's like it's the next generation part of gaming. Honestly, uh, it's it's something new, novel, exciting. Everybody can play it at the same time. It's a massive multiplayer online role playing game. So and it basically combines MMORPGs and Web3 enabled virtual worlds. So combine NFTs, combine gaming, combine like next generation, you know, free for all games and all that stuff. And you're just going to get an explosion of like amazing economies. And it's out of this world. I'm not going to lie. So, you know, your NFTs can become playable characters and you know, a lot of people can play at the same time. So I'm really looking forward to that. I hope you are as well. It's really exciting and I hope you don't miss it, truly. So again, um, you know, Yuga Labs, Yugaverse, they are really pushing the boundaries of what is possible in gaming. Uh, you know, they're trying to make an immersive, interactive and collaborative game in the spirit of Dungeons and Dragons. So it's an always evolving experience co-created with its players. So it's kind of like an early access, except you know, it's a really expensive early access. Uh, I won't lie; it's it's not that ex it's not that, it's not like fifty bucks. So again, keep that in mind. Um, but I really think that it's going to be something you know one of a kind. So if that's something that you want to you know take a look at, you know, be my guest. I guess that's why you're here. So you know, building future is a team effort, and we want you to be part of our team. So again, let's scroll down. You can see all the beautiful lands here. So your other need awaits. So in order to play the game, you know, you, you're going to, you know, you can build uh, for, okay. So to build, to play with others, I'm just too excited for this. <laughs> I'm going to like take a day, take a deep breath and just, you know, go through here slowly. So you can collect resources, great, and play on it and make yourself a home. And it'll be made, it'll be everything uh, that you make of it. And other D will be your key. So again, you know, we can kind of see the distribution of other deeds, you know, 10% board apes, 20% mutant apes, so on and so forth, biogenic swamp, chemical goo, you know, all the sediment layers and, you know, where all, where everything is going. So pretty transparent here. Come as you are. So bring your own character. Other deed is for everybody. Um, you know, bases, Macy's, Backseas, Crypto Punk holders, you know, you're, you're going to get 3D models, you know, to play at game launch, um, you know, as playable characters. And, you know, we can kind of see everything that Yuga has accumulated. So this is kind of like the Yugaverse, Cool Cats, CryptoPunks, Baxi's, Cryptodes, uh, MeBits, World of Women, CryptoPunks. And all these are going to be interoperable inside of the meta, inside of the other side. So really interesting stuff. So create for the other side. So if you like building your own stuff, um, this is a really interesting aspect because it's going to, because they, they've seen the game trend. Like, Stuff that's built by the stuff that's built and owned by the game players is like a critical way to to get content inside your game without having to develop it yourself because you're gonna want to incentivize players to build their own experiences. So the ODK will allow creators to make things for the other side. Excuse me, and sell them in the game's marketplace. So not just characters, but outfits, stool structures, and even games itself. So that that real. Uh, that, that really takes things from like, um, let's say Roblox is a good example. Roblox is a really player built uh, game platform and developers uh, really reap the benefits of expanding the network and taking a portion of it for their for themselves and you know providing value inside the game. So, I mean, if you, if you build that out from the very beginning, it's gonna be a great experience. So creation comes with perks, get first dibs on the ODK. So if you're a creator, definitely sign up here and you know have access to that, you know, if you really wanna get started on the other side. So. Again, the basis of the game is going to be built off of ApeCoin. So, I mean, it's not a, it's not a coincidence that Create for the other side and ApeCoin are, you know, right next to each other. So, I mean, it doesn't take, I mean, if you want to play the game, it's not going to take cash, credit, or checks. You know, the economy runs on ApeCoin. And should you aim to purchase an item on Ape, other side, it's ApeCoin that you're going to need. So, take that for what you will, but everything inside of other, other side 
you know, there's gonna, there's probably going to be a marketplace. I mean, if you if we looked at the, I know in the other blog posts we covered this extensively. Just get, just joking. We looked at a we looked at an alpha an alpha image of Legends of the Mara, but there literally was like an ape coin, you know, counter on the in the top corner. Um, so that indica- that kind of implies that ape coin is going to be the basis for all in game economy actions. Um, which kind of makes sense. I mean, kind of looked, uh, I know the, there was another Yugaverse game, HTVML. Um, I know I'm going to, I probably said that wrong, but that game also runs on ApeCoin, but I know there's also time input that also probably access currency as well. Um, so that's going to be interesting. So everything on the other side is built on Improbable's M2 technology, which uh, I'm going to spare you all the tech speak here. But it basically means that 10,000 plus players are going to be able to play on one game instance at any given moment at any time. Um, and it's going to be a, a, a permanent, very permanent universe where everything's happening concurrently. So, and it's not, it's not going to be relegated to the power of your computer because that would be prohibitive. We want everybody to be able to play anywhere from a browser. And so far, that has been my experience. I remember taking a look at the first trip, and it was amazing because it just ran in Chrome, basically streamed the game to your computer, and it it was like wow, it was amazing. Like the graphics were relative were relative to a to AAA game. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. I will say that. Um, but again, you know, a lot of players. You know, there's I guess in game uh, te- uh, voice. There's also it's. Anyways, <laughs> besides the tech stuff, you know, we can go ahead and click the world again, you know, stranger world can kind of go over, you know, all this kind of goes over the land, uh, kind of goes over, it, it goes over the basic, you know, types of tiers and other. So basically this is kind of like, oh, there's diff- five different kinds of biomes. Uh, there's tier one biomes, tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five, obviously they grow in size um, as you, you know, get bigger lands and they obviously cost more. But I'm, I'm going really fast over that because uh, I'm assuming that a lot of people, I'm assuming you know a lot about uh, other other side here, pardon, but um, I'll, I'll get to more of it, you know, as we scroll down. But again, inside of other side, the native, uh, the natives will be the Kodas. So these are primal beings that have ushered us into other side. So we don't know why they're here or, you know, what their affinity to this land is, but um you know, Kodas, I think they're about four or five ETH as of the time of this video, but I, I don't have a, a marketplace chart to look at right now. So maybe that's completely off. Um, but again, uh, what's a little bit more interesting in terms of gameplay is that there's four kinds of resources, um, you know, anima, ore, shard, root. And, you know, we don't really know about we don't really know a lot about all of these right now. Um, but, you know, with basic stuff we can see here, I mean, anima is for research or is for metal, shard is for stone and I don't know necessarily what the difference between metal and stone are, um, but we also have root, which is wood. So kind of interesting. Um, so if we scroll down, we can see there there are different types of artifacts. So again, uh, they're rare. Ob- there are rare. Are there? Ra- t- I'm having a tongue twister here, but basically there's a variety of rarities and artifacts, and um, you know there are some that cannot be crafted. But that also implies that there are going to be some that will be able to be crafted. So if you find an artifact, know that it may hold secrets to this world as it expands. So, ooh, canon lore events. <laughs> um, but again, you can kind of look at each thing. I'm, I'm, I think form is tied to function, so it kind of makes sense that this, you know, mining axe is probably for mining. This is probably for farming. Um, and then this obelisk thing is probably for summoning. I don't know. <laughs> but... Take it for what you will. That looks like a pretty good, pretty cool sword here. But again, every other deed is a dynamic NFT. So it's not really like a PFP, um, you know, like the, the previous cycle was. Uh, it's it's a it's a built, it's a collection of all of its elements. So it's codas, it's sediments, it's anything. Um, but again, you can this the website really covers everything related to what a land uh, cons, uh, cons, parts are. <laughs> so again this if we go recap this is the sediment icon so this is kind of like this is the sediment your your land has and you know as we learned from the gaming blog the sediment tier dictates how fast you can get fragments out of the sediment and i guess the fragments are really critical to 
evolving your uh, Mara into a Kotamara, but I think I'm going a little bit too deep in the weeds. So the details, you can get the land name and the name of the sediment here. Tier rarity, you can kind of see the, the land rarity tiers, and we know that the tier rarity is kind of the size of the land, and that will dictate how big it is and how many workers can be on it inside of Legends of the Mara. Um, and then, you know, we have artifacts here. So if you have one, you have one. You know, Codas, if you have one, you have one. Uh, if you don't, you don't. Um, but with tier rarity, you can also see the, the rarity of the resource that you have. So again, I know we weren't necessarily explicitly told what the tier rarity means. We were told what the sediment rarity um, was in the blog. So like sediment rarity determines how fast you can mine the sediment fragments. It would logically make sense that if the tier rarity of the resource dictates how fast your farmers in Legends of the Mara can farm the, t the resource itself. So I would say the higher the resource tier, the faster you're going to be able to get it. So, you know, let's just keep going. Um, you know, this is the key to the other side. So definitely have one if you want to play the game. Um, but again, let's just go ahead and take a look at Explore. Again, briefly, the Explore tab is the entire galaxy archipelago of the other side. So if you just go ahead and just click right here, you can just kind of click and it'll bring you to the center. This is the base, this is the Board of Yacht Club. Uh, everything's centered on this, <laughs> this club. So, I mean, if you take a look, hey, this is jam number 25, you can just kind of see everything about the land. But if you have one and you want to see where you're at, you can go to the search bar and just type in your number and that'll bring you to your other deed. But I know there are a couple of other indie tools, uh, you know, community developed tools that, sorry, I did not mean to say indie, <laughs> just kind of comes to mind, but there are a lot of other tools that can show you this map, but I, I can't remember it off the top of my head. But again, feel free to explore the land as you see fit, but let's just go ahead and click on the obelisk here. So this will bring you to the Voyager's journey. So we've already had the first trip. So this is the first tech demo. Um, I'm not sure if we necessarily covered the codex here. So. A codex is where you link your lands and more, and on the other side, codex, a living document co-written with the Voyagers. So today's decision brings possibilities and risk for the future of other sides, so tread carefully. I don't know if we've covered this one thus far, but I know that we've covered the Coda uh, Origins and the Decoupling because the, we have both collections. So, I mean, that that, partic that particular event has occurred inside of the, the obelisk here. So other deeds can uh, kind of dictate what the constituent parts are. So... It covers the Coda's past, um, an opportunity for Voyagers to decouple and their Codas and artifacts. Where do they go? Voyagers decide. So I would say the next thing that's probably going to happen is either the Codex or the growth. I mean, the growth makes more sense because the lands of the other side rumble to life, generating resources, but a destructive and invasive species also emerges. So heed the Codex, uh, Codex Voyager. So that refers to the Shattered. Um, you know, the resources are coming to life. So obviously that's going to be related to farming. Um, and then fighting the shattered will be the game mechanism that gets people onto the leaderboard, which will generate rewards at the end of each season. So there's going to be a lot of people looking to min max and play the game and, you know, get specific resources and put, put their codas or, you know, Mars and, um, you know, evolve them into code Mars, uh, you know, based off the meta that comes out pretty soon by the end of the summer. It's pretty soon. I'm not going to lie. So uh, I think uh, things are going to get things are going to get really fast uh, pretty soon here. So position yourself accordingly. Um, you know, if we scroll down, we can kind of take a look at the next step. So the Agora Voyagers come together to buy, sell, barter and trade. So this refers to the part where they kind of get the economy rolling. So it makes sense. It's logical, you know, you decouple the codas from their lands. You decouple. You get every. You give every landowner a vessel, and you allow them to, you know, put them where they want, and you know, participate in the first season of like comp competitive leaderboard rewards, and uh, allows. And then, and then you eventually add in the part where people collaborate, trade, do everything. And in the context of um, ApeCoin, it would make sense that all the rewards. Are tradable on market inside of the in-game marketplace because i do also remember that when we when we went over the gaming blog in the pre-alpha of legends of the mara there was a marketplace button and there was also a apecoin uh indicator um very much similar to htvml 
um, which is the, it was another NFT collection that used ApeCoin that was adjacent to other side, I believe. But feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the, in the comments. I'm kind of remembering thing, everything uh, off the top of the cusp of my head. So again, the Agora will allow people to create new items from raw materials, build, create, and innovate with each other. So this sets up the base, the basis of trading, uh, buying, selling, trading in game. So that's going to be really, really interesting and to see how all of that plays out. And I know there has been a lot of whales that have been looking to accumulate uh, all of the resources, or at least have one land of every single resource, but there aren't that, there's only like eight, I, I forgot what the club was, but anyways, that's besides the point. The next step we, here we have is the dream. So an impossible arcade machine emerges at the center of the biogenic swamp. So you're gonna wanna use your trip wisely and be rewarded. Hmm. So it seems like after Marketplace, they have a huge community event coming. <clears throat> Excuse me. That seems pretty uh, heavily implied. Um, an arcade machine seems very gamified. Emerges at the center of the Biogenic Swamp. Seems like another event. Seems really exciting, uh, in my opinion. Um, so it makes sense people are going to be able to evolve their kotamaras i mean their mars and kotamaras people are going to be able to mine resources you know participate in the seasonal catalysts be able to buy sell trade and get really geared up for this uh big event that's probably going to happen with the dream so use your trip wisely and be rewarded that's exciting if you ask me uh, exclusive rewards uh, don't mind if i do I i'm sure Everybody loves exclusive rewards. I'm. I know that uh, we saw that uh, cosmetic item drop for Team Glacia when the second trip came around. So um, this is really exciting, especially if it's ready to func uh, functionality uh, and like exclusive stuff that comes in the game. So if we go, if we keep moving on, the choice is uh, presents us a question: What lies beyond the other side? What creatures call it home, and are they friends or foes? New lands activate and are available to voyagers it's time to choose a sign very interesting wording here uh it seems like after all of these things happen um you know there's something special that happens and then it seems like there it seems like this event translates into people being able to choose a side that seems like a a very community competitive focus uh reminds me a lot about Hmm, I can't remember that off the top of my head, but basically new lands activate. So that just kind of seems obvious. That seems like the other hundred thousand lands are going to be airdrop that seem all speculation, of course, but they literally say it here. So new lands activate. That's the other hundred thousand. So um, I would definitely try to participate in all of these things to uh, to get that airdrop, <laughs> not financial advice, no. <laughs> but um, it's time to choose a side. That's going to be really interesting. So it seems like it'd probably be a team, a world leaderboard, maybe. We'll see. Choose a good side, bad side. Anyways, don't really know too much about that. But let's move on to the next one, the settling. So the other side is what you make of it. Take your resources and crafted items and create structures to populate your land. So this seems like it's related to building, which pretty interesting this probably relates to the odk as well probably create your own game experiences um maybe even sell things but again all that speculation so if we move on to the next thing the toolkit okay I, I jumped the gun here but an odk brings new opportunities for voyagers leave your mark on the other side as we build bigger together okay okay and then the next part the aeronauts much of the other side is shrouded in mystery but who knows what voyagers might discover with a different perspective VR, I'm assuming? Speculation? I'm not sure. <laughs> this is my reaction to this after like all the Legends of the Mars stuff and all the all of that. But I have no idea. I I think that's what it refers to. Um that's definitely what it refers to, speculatively speaking. And then we have the rift here. So this is kind of the last thing. So an interdimensional rift cuts open in the sky. It's time to fully explore. Choose your starting stats and skills. Very interesting wording and very, I like that. Um, your work on the obelisk is complete, but there is still much more to be done. Hmm. So with everything we know about Legends of the Mara, and just to recap, I do, I'll do it backwards. The Rift 
seems like uh, this is kind of opening up a wormhole or maybe like interoperability with other types of worlds and stuff like that. So I guess we'll see that happen. This is probably VR uh, toolkit. Obviously the Roblox, it's the build your own games. Uh, very reminiscent of like um, Roblox and its, its ability to, uh, you know, give creators a, you know, a portion of their own um, earnings and stuff like that. You know, kind of know what I'm getting at. <laughs> I'm kind of having a brain fart how to explain that, but um, it allows people to build any experience that they want. Um, and then we have the choice in the settling. So, you know, it is what you make of it. Your resources can, you know, create structures. So this is building. And then the choice is like the all encompassing, like choose your side. We have the dream, which is that really interesting arcade event with, rewards <laughs> uh, the agora um, buy sell trade um, the marketplace uh, the growth activating the lands and the decoupling so you know, getting that other expanded but and then we also have the codex mm -hmm. in the first trip so lay of the land and the first demo so hey thank you for getting this far in the video i appreciate it very much and um i hope you've learned a lot and hopefully this was insightful but again you can always find me in the other side official uh, Discord. You can also find me in the other side, uh, Wiki um, Discord as well. But feel free to shoot me a message on uh, Twitter or anywhere. Or, you know, ping me. I'm, I'll be happy to answer your questions. And you know, I'm really excited for Legends, Legends of Lamara and the next iteration of Other Side and everything that's to come. But again, um, you know, I'm signing off. See you guys later. Thanks.